Today I'll be going over everything you need to begin doing PvP in StarCraft, as well as how to min-max your chance of killing players early on, and no, this is not bandit specific. This will work on Stalker Faction as well. We'll be going over what you need to focus on the second you load in, to what your end goal for PvP gear in the starter zone is. And then from here, some movement tips, and then my personal tips so you can win more gunfights and outplay your opponents. Now, let's get started. Alright guys, at the start, your main focus is going to be getting green mold and swamp stones. Why do you need those? Well, to start, you're going to get a starter pistol if you do the main quest lines. Not a starter pistol, a starter ship, a submachine gun. And the submachine guns in this game just do not hit. You will not do any damage to another player at all with a submachine gun. So what your main focus needs to be is getting a worn AK. And then after getting that worn AK, which you can just buy for 940 rubles, you are then going to want to upgrade it to just a standard AK. But you will need green mold and swamp stones. Now in order to get green mold and swamp stones, you can get the green mold from doing dog dens, flesh hideouts, or uh, the boars that pop up as well. It's an event. And you can get the swamp stones from any of the humanoid NPCs. So that would be like the stalker camp or say like military events and you kill the AI there and you will get a swamp stone. Now you will need those so you can upgrade it not only the AK-74U but so you can also craft your coat with body armor. Now you should not be engaging in any form of PvP under any circumstance until you at least have this first item the coat with body armor no matter what do not engage in pvp unless you can get this item first why because if you have these starter gear like i have here still in my bag this is what you start with notice how it does not have a armor plate so you don't have any armor plates however on any other gear in the world other than the starter gear you can equip armor plates that will make a massive difference in your pvp outcome you will not win gunfights if you do not have armor plates unless you're absolutely cracked and an absolute demon which granted i at least got one kill without armor plates but i can promise you it was the sweatiest most intense thing i've ever done in my life do not engage until you at least get the coat with body armor how do you get that once again swamp stones and green mold and so this should be your main focus when you first load in is getting your ak-74u getting the worn with 940 rubles and then upgrading it now how do you make rubles well you can sell any items you get from killing beasts here as well as once you get that coat with armor and you can start equipping armor plates you can buy armor plates from this gentleman so your main focus off rep just uh just a recap will be get green mold get swamp stones as many as you can stack on them and you do that exactly as i said by dong dens boar hideouts stalker camps and military compounds get those get the coat and then upgrade the ak-74u also you are going to want if you're a good shot to prioritize also for combat pvp getting a mosin and then you can just buy it outright and then once again upgrading it but upgrading it will be way later on down the line that's something that we'll talk about mid game but for right now just focus on getting your mosin and your ak upgraded and then once you have those things you're uh you're pretty much set and ready for pvp all right guys so now we're going to talk about the best gear early on so the best gear early on is going to be um basically the ak-74u that we spot talked about you're going to want to get this uh handrail for it which is an attachment that you can equip to it and then you're going to want to get a sight for it my personal preference is the abozor which i think is the only one you can actually put on the ak early on um and then obviously the pu optical sight for the mosin once you guys have that your next biggest thing is going to be getting the uh, current armor so it's going to require level five of wherever your starter zone is right so that's the boathouse for bandits for the stalkers that's something else but you have to get it to level five to make it current now how do you get it to level five you might ask well to start you need to do all these side quests 
all of the side quests in the area to help you level up. And then also by doing flesh hideouts, by doing dog dens, by doing stalker camps, by doing military compounds, by doing, you know, boar hideouts, by doing all of those, you will gain rep towards, you will gain rep towards your starter zone. And you need to you you need to get enough rep that it hits the starter zone to level five. So you need to achieve level five to be able to craft all the gear that you need, the best armor, etc., etc. You can see what current level you are, at least in the boathouse, by going over here to this little thing right here, the blueprint. You can see that it says level five, max out. And so that's how you can see your current level. And now, in my opinion. The best way, at least early on, to get level 5 is obviously going to be to do all the quests. There are repeatable side quests, so you're going to make sure to do all the repeatable side quests you can. Ear has a repeatable side quest, along with a gentleman over here that has a repeatable side quest. Side quests aside, you are going to have to do some farming. Yep, Mammoth has a side quest. Other than that, you are going to have to do some farming, so if you do the flesh hideouts and stuff, you can obviously get, you know, rep as well. And to gain that rep is not actually by killing the monsters, it is by looting the stashes that drop after you complete the, I guess, quote-unquote hunt is what it would be called. And once you do that, you craft the gear, the current gear as it's called, which this gentleman's wearing, I'm wearing. You're, uh, you have, you're officially have in-game PvP gear. Um, you can obviously as well level up your, or buy your shotgun once you level up uh, the boathouse or your starter zone as well. But yeah, obviously make a backpack. But yeah, as soon as you, uh, as soon as you finish up hitting level 5, you can craft all the best gear you need for early on PvP. Alright guys, so we're going to be going over some movement tips. And I just want to start off rip by saying that movement in this game will definitely get you kills. Movement in this game will definitely keep you alive. You just have to know how to utilize it. On the bottom right of your screen, you will see a lightning bolt just below your health bar, and that is your stamina. Now, the golden rule, if you've ever played a looter shooter before, that being Daisy, um, I think Tarkov, pretty much any looter shooter is sprint two times as often, but for a shorter duration. So what that means is like spam, spam your sprint button, right? Spam it. In this game, if you actually spam your sprint button, you see as I'm doing, I'm moving pretty fast, faster than walking, but I'm spamming my sprint button. But you notice that my stamina isn't actually depleting. So that's a broken movement mechanic that you can utilize in PVP, right? Obviously full sprinting is a little bit faster, but if you have to, you can always spam. So the biggest thing being is that jumping takes stamina and laying down takes stamina, okay? A lot of stamina to lay down. You should be laying down behind cover um, and you should be playing around cover with your movement, okay? So I can show probably some examples on screen. If I have any, I'll put, I'll put them up right now. But say I'm challenging, say it's that tree right there, right? I shoot that tree, right? Shot it. I come back around, shoot it. I go back behind this thing for a little bit of cover, come back out, I shoot it. Oh, I'm hit. So what do I do? I lay down. Now it can't see me. But the second I pop back up, look at my stamina. It's a lot lower, so I can't sprint as often. So you have to be cautious of where your stamina is. But definitely, as you see here, use the earth, the ground, the dirt as, I guess, a way to cut off line of sight when laying down. Sometimes what I'll do, right, is if I'm fighting somebody, I'll snipe, hit him with my Mosin, because the Mosin is not a one-shot in this game unless you have explosive rounds in the early area. The Mosin's not a one-shot, but what I'll do is I'll snipe somebody, lay down, I will swap to my assault rifle, my AK, and then I'll shoot them and finish them off that way. But all that comes from being able to lay down and swap weapons, so you need to be utilizing the ground. My next tip is jumping, right? So say there's somebody inside this building right here, right? Say he's like playing this angle right here, right? And I know he's here and he's like playing all these weird angles and he's aiming like this. Now, it's all about information. So I jump up. Okay, I can see that he's in that window now. I jump up. Okay, I can see that he's still in that window. And then I can come around this corner, shoot, come back, jump for information, come around, shoot, go back, jump for information, come around, shoot. So you 
you see, if I do that quick jump, he won't be able to react fast enough because he's going to be watching these corners because he knows that that's where I'm going to challenge from. So jumping is definitely extremely useful. Another thing that's useful is if you jump and you hold Q, you can climb almost all objects, right? See? Jump and hit Q. So that'll let you get on top of like maybe some buildings and different things that you could use to get the high ground on enemy players. And remember guys, the high ground always wins in gunfights. All right, um, other than that, I'd say movement wise, um, your overall, you just need to be playing around cover, watching and looking out for cover, and honestly, even trees, man. There's been so many gunfights I've won just because I've been like moving around a tree. Like, use something for cover in this game. You cannot run out in the open. You will never win a gunfight out in the open. It's just, it's not viable in this game at all. It's not, it's not at all. Also, real quick guys, before we decide to hop on to the next segment, you can actually, if you look at the stamina bar, you can charge your jump so you can jump even higher. So if you hold down the space bar, you see a blue line come up across your stamina. And then if you release, you jump even higher. So you don't even have to climb this wall that I told you guys about earlier. You don't even have to climb it. You can just jump right on top of it. And that can really throw a player off, right? Like, say this dude that I was telling you about earlier. He comes down. He starts charging right here. I can hear him on the other side of the wall, right? And he might not know that I can just quickly... I, I can just quickly jump up. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But, like, say he's, like, right here on the other side of the wall. He's going to come around. I can easily just... Bop, boom, 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 boom. He's dead. Bro, it's so easy. There's so many outplay mechanics you can do, but you just have to listen. Listen that he's pushing up. Listen that he's, like, right here on the other side of the wall waiting for you. And then you can just pop up. Super easy. He'll never expect it. You will win every gunfight. In that, in that exact scenario, you'll win every gunfight, man. All right, guys. So we're going to be going over some of the gameplay that I did um, last night live on Twitch. Um, we're going to be going over some of it. And we're going to discuss kind of like, I guess, how I handled certain engagements. This first engagement, I actually wound up dying in the end. Um, unfortunately, I was outgeared. I'm in a higher level area. This is not the beginner area where I did this engagement. So I did get I did get outgeared in the end. But the way I played it, the mindset and my thought process was all top tier. And I just want to walk you guys through it so you guys can kind of uh, kind of understand how I handle engagements and the best way to handle engagements. And then we'll go over a couple more. So as you guys can see, I noticed that there's people over there, but I'm just making sure there's nothing else around me. I see them. I take my first shot, I miss it. It happens. Take my second shot, he wound up peeking back behind the tree, but see how we're, see how we're using the tree here? I wound up getting that hit, I wound up killing him. Then I get shot at, right? So I move. I change my position, but all the while I am moving. Constantly going side to side, zigzagging. Right? I hit him. He's low. He's super low. Now he's behind a tree. I got a guy on me. He's one shot. I'm just informing my teammate that he's one shot. I see an enemy right here to the left, right here. You can see him. And so what I decided to do is he's probably rotating around on me. So I just, I move back a little bit just to be safe. And then I see him leave and fully go around. So I'm able to hit him. But as you can see, I have a Mosin. I hit him and that's all the damage I did. Bro, this guy, when I tell you he is geared, he is geared. Okay, that's besides the point. So I know that he's rotating around to my left side. So I immediately go and take cover. I, ro I change. I change my position. I play it for a little bit. Hopefully thirst the next guy. But you see that I... Yep. I change I change my position. I'm just informing my teammates. Letting them know that there's two of them. Um, how they're going to be playing me. I swapped to my assault rifle. Because in this situation... There's no, there's no reason for me to be sniping. You guys see how there is 
trees right here. There, it's just there's no point in me sniping. It's all going to be close engagements from here on out. So I pull out my assault rifle. see him and he's dead and yeah that's gonna be how I handled that engagement all right guys so this next one I'm gonna be doing is just simply I guess how to outplay your enemy I guess how to how to outplay them so what happens here is is I shoot him right he gets shot in the head Right, so he immediately goes behind the truck. You're gonna see that he comes out and missed my shot, that happens. But he's gonna go back behind the truck. And now this is where you guys have to learn and listen. And you remember how I said earlier about listening? You guys have to listen for things in this game and I'll be going over everything that happens from here on out as far as what you need to be listening for and audio cues for PvP. So I missed my shot and it happens. The Mosin bullets are fucking, they're weird. I swapped to my AR because I'm going to push. But notice, notice real quick how when I swapped, I went down. I went down. I broke line of sight. I went down as I was swapping. See that? So you always want to be in cover when you're swapping weapons. But I rotate around. Now here, listen very closely. You will hear him bandaging. Okay, listen very closely, guys. You will hear him bandaging. You hear that? That little, it, it, it's it's super light, but it, but it sounds like a, like, have you ever, like, crinkled up, like, a, like, a Rice Krispie wrapper or something like that? Like, it just sounds like a crinkle. That, that means that they're bandaging. You can hear it. And then I just rotate around him. But you notice how he was so focused, right? He was so focused on where I was earlier, right? And this is what I mean, guys, by... Listen, he obviously didn't hear my footsteps. He obviously wasn't using a headset. I think he was using his like his, his in-home speakers or something. You guys need to be listening. This guy probably could have won that chow if he had just listened. But he didn't. He didn't want to listen. But I did. And I heard he was bandaging. So I knew he was at a disadvantage. Versus him listening and hearing that I was coming, right? He hearing that my footsteps were on the way, he could have heard my footsteps, and he could have just turned and shot me too. But instead, he didn't listen, and I did. And I won that gunfight because of it. So, I guess my best advice here, guys, is take cover when swapping weapons. Definitely swap weapons for close engagements. Use the Mosin for long engagements, and listen, guys. Seriously, what I see a lot of people in this game doing is not listening they're not listening for cues they're not listening for audio cues it's just it's so detrimental guys either way if you guys like the content you guys like the video definitely check me out on twitch i will be live streaming there i am going to be eventually swapping over permanently to youtube but definitely check me out live on twitch that is twitch.tv slash sussy tokyo um if you stayed this long definitely like um drop a sub Appreciate the love, guys. And if you guys have any questions or any concerns or anything, definitely drop a comment uh, down below. And join my Discord. I'd be more than glad to party up with you guys, do some PvP with you guys, help you all out. Um, if there's any veteran players here that want to, you know, show me the ropes on some of the higher tier stuff, please do. But this is just what I've learned so far, and I know that this game can be very daunting and very intimidating to new players. So I just figured as an overall, I'd give them my best advice, my best tips, and how I handle things. So I hope everybody has a great new year, and Tokyo out!